Good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Growtown. Good morning, Columbia County. Good morning, Georgia. And good morning, the world <laughs> on YouTube. So welcome, welcome. My name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Libraries, the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, and the Growtown Library with our new building. Yay. <laughs> of course, we're doing all our we're staying safe and we're doing all our classes virtually now and everything so if you haven't been to one of my previous virtual classes they're listed here on the channel or if maybe you've been in one of my um, in-person classes in the past welcome 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 <laughs> so our class today is going to be introduction to Raspberry Pi and project ideas so this is an on-ground class that we've done for a few years and basically the ideas that you uh, good morning Jan, good morning, good morning. Glad that you're here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so the idea of our introduction to Raspberry Pi is that basically we would have a, a handout for everybody. Everybody have their own little Raspberry Pi to do the hands-on projects and stuff. And because we're doing it virtually, it's a little bit more complicated, of course. So the idea of this class is to basically get the, the syllabus out there, uh, kind of go over the syllabus, kind of learn a little bit of the new stuff, and hopefully, if you're at home, kind of get you started, interested in doing projects with Raspberry Pi, and uh, do some coding, and what other kind of stuff can we come up with. And then I'll be demonstrating a few of those. Um, we'll go too deep into it, and basically just some recommendations on stuff that you can get to get started. Okay. So before we start class, and I'll have a second uh, camera come up too, so you can actually see what I'm working on. So before we start class, the big question I always ask is, how can I help? Okay, have you used the Raspberry Pi before? Okay, feel free to post any kind of questions or comments into the chat. As you know, there may be a little bit of delay for me to reply to them, um, but I will get to those questions. Uh, another thing is, you know, we switched over from Facebook to here to um, YouTube. So make sure that you're logged into YouTube so that you can like, subscribe to our library channel, and also so that you can ask questions as well. Okay. So let's go over some of the classes we did this week. Tuesday we did Windows 10 introduction, flash drive basics, and saving to an external hard drive as well. That video is still up and available. Yesterday we did internet shopping and digital couponing. Uh, which is a very fun class so that video is still up and available as well and we also did internet and browser basics okay talked about add-ons to our browser ad blockers that video is still available as well of course this morning we're doing the Raspberry Pi project and ideas Yay! <laughs> and then this afternoon we'll be doing kind of part three of our boot camp class We'll be doing Google search and internet safety basics. We'll be talking about using Google, internet scams, spotting fake news, and keeping yourself safe and online, okay? Here's kind of a listing of some of our other classes coming up. Uh, next week, we'll be doing uh, internet safety and security, which we'll talk, be talking about what a VPN is and how to use that. We'll also be doing a video creating basics class using the Windows Photos app that comes free with Windows. Okay, And then we'll also be doing internet safety and security on the 26th at 11. Okay, In the morning of the 27th, we're going to be doing a drop-in gadget help, which I'll be live. And you can just drop in with your questions, and we'll be doing that again on Thursday afternoon, uh, excuse me, Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon. So definitely come by for that if you have any questions. Just a little side note, our libraries are uh, uh, open uh, with limited services and hours. You can get curbside holds pickup on books and DVDs and stuff. You can go to gchrl.org for details or you can call into the libraries Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos including this video please and also uh, if you are looking for our YouTube channel which you're on right now you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and that's the easiest way to find us okay and I'll come back for a second hey I'm back <laughs> 
Jan, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Okay, so let me go ahead and I will post our handout in our chat there as everybody's kind of coming into the classroom and everything. <laughs> Have you used the Raspberry Pi before? All right, so there's our main handout. Like I said, this is something that we do um, on ground with our classes and everybody kind of has a Raspberry Pi. And then while, while we kind of walk through this, I'm gonna do some of the examples in there and then I'll start talking about other projects like game machines and movie players and all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with your Raspberry Pi too. And last time I did open up a Raspberry Pi for a Kana kit and I'll kind of show that around a little bit too. Oh, you've observed one? Okay, good, good. That's good to hear. Okay, so let me go ahead and... So any questions before we get started? Make sure this is the right one. I want to show. Yeah, okay. All right. So basically, in class, one of the things we would do is I'd basically have the handout for everybody, and we would a little too close there stream close up on there we basically go through the handout and then of course we would do the the hands-on part and everything so some of this I'll kind of flip back and forth and of course I'll have my camera in just a minute kind of point out the different parts and stuff and let's talk about what we're going to cover uh, this morning okay we're going to cover uh, the big thing is, and I kind of got involved with this, is because I was interested in the Raspberry Pi, using it for little projects. I actually went to the Raspberry Pi website, and I got the training to be uh, to be a physical computing instructor. Okay, if you're interested in that course, <laughs> they actually have that available through Future Learn, and I got cer certified in that, and also the. Um, of course, I'm trying to remember what the name of the other class is. There's another class that I recently got certified in through them as well. Okay, so. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, physical computing, building and interacting physical systems by the use of software and hardware that can sense and respond to our analog world. Okay, things like buttons, getting LEDs to blink. Okay. We'll talk about a brief introduction to the Raspberry Pi computer. Uh, we'll talk about input and output. We'll talk about GPIO pins, uh, general input and output pins. We'll talk about getting started with Python because that's the coding language that we use when we want to get Python get it to do stuff. There's other languages you can use too, but that's really the main one for our projects we're going to be using. We'll talk about discovering how uh, simple circuits work. Okay, how to connect an LED to your Raspberry Pi and how to switch your LED on and off using Python code to create a light sequence. Okay, like blinky, 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 blink. Okay, uh, we'll, t we'll connect and take input from a single button. So I'm actually going to be doing um, the, uh, the, I'll show you the code on here, of course, with our handout. I'll show you the, uh, the setup with the LED, we'll talk about setting up a button and stuff, but because of my setup, I can't really show 
where we do live code and then post it as well because I just don't have that capability currently. So we'll all do physical stuff and I'll also show pictures about projects and we'll talk about them as well. So we'll talk about uh, connect to take uh, input from a simple simple button and then we'll talk about creating a reflex game. This is a great project uh, with friends or family members. I remember working on this and it popped up and I just said just like family coming over and saying, wow, this is great. This is fun. I was like, yes, it is. Uh, it's very simple. So you get your LED, you get your button all set up, and then you can actually make a reflex game. Other fun games, things to do, build a virtual whoopee cushion, okay, which is kind of one of the Raspberry Pi's uh, big things that they like to make, kind of with uh, little littler kids because it's part project, also part kind of fun and silliness. And I'll talk about that, and I should have. If I don't have it in here, I'll go get one, one of our uh, pie plates that we make in class. We'll also talk about resources and other projects, and that's when we'll kind of go off and kind of explore and kind of show you some of the stuff that you could build with the Raspberry Pi and go in a little bit more detail on that because we're in the virtual environment, okay? We'll talk about a big one here before we get started is talking about failure okay so first attempt in learning is probably failure you're, you're like well I'll just plug this thing all together and it's gonna work it probably won't for the first time uh, at least the way that you're expecting it to work I'll say that um, and that's happened to me you know constantly and it just kinda happens with projects like okay now this should work plug in is like why is it doing that um, and then you have to learn and, and learn and figure out what exactly is happening. So first attempt in learning is probably failure. A big one when we're doing any kind of coding is to realize you need to go and check your code. Because you may have just, you know, not put something in the right place. Or if you're doing the code for the first time, you may not capitalize something where it needs to be capitalized. And that's okay. Okay. This kind of leads into our other classes. We have a scratch uh, animation class. We also have a Scratch um, learning to uh, make games with Scratch and then we have a, a class Scratch to Python class as well. We'll probably rotate those uh, next month to kind of get everybody else involved and uh, interested in the you know kind of going back to school and everything. So we need to kind of focus on some of our learning projects and stuff so definitely keep an eye out for that. Some of those videos should still be up and available on our YouTube channel. So before we get started, uh, any questions? Okay. Any questions? All right. All right. So I'll usually pause if I if I expect you to ask a question or something. But definitely feel free to kind of post anything into the chat. Any questions you have? Like I said, there's a little bit of delay. And it may take me a second to be able to get to that, but I will, okay? All right, let's talk about what you need for our projects, okay? Well, the big thing is I would recommend at least a, a Raspberry Pi 3. The newer version of the Raspberry Pi is 4, which will take a little bit of a, a um, walkthrough on that a little bit later. We'll pull up the website, and they have like a little video to show uh, to do that but at least have Raspberry Pi 3. So if you are doing some projects, and um, I wouldn't say maybe the, the first one, I would probably recommend getting the, the first one you use to be like a brand new one, but you might be able to find one used on eBay or some other stores online if you're thinking about making other projects too. Um, just so that kind of get you started, uh, I'd still recommend you know getting a brand new one. Because we're talking about $35 is our base price for like a Raspberry Pi 3. So some of those are really selling cheaply. But mostly put that money, if you're going to start fresh and new, get your Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. So at least a 3, uh, or at least a good used 3. <laughs> and then just realize there may be some other costs in there, like the power cord is, would be separate. And the micro SD card to have the software on. So basically at least have a Raspberry Pi 3 okay we need a micro SD card for our computer to have a software on it now don't we so that's like its little hard drive uh, and also need to download the Raspbian 
uh, software they've actually renamed that basically to the Pi operating system which is fine but you'll still see some places that'll say Raspbian and you can download that from their website and it has instructions on installing it and everything the other things you'll need of course is a computer monitor okay the Raspberry Pi actually has VGA output okay VG, excuse me, HDMI output. I don't know why I said that. HDMI output, and all you really need to do is you get a converter, plug it in there, and then you can get it to be VGA out if you want it to plug into like a laptop or something. Okay. Also need a USB keyboard and a mouse. Uh, one of those wireless ones works really well, especially if you're working with projects that you're going to plug into the TV. Okay. A 400 point breadboard, which I'll be showing the breadboard in jail. There it is. Yay, there's our breadboard. Yay. Oh, it's transparent. Oh, it's a ghost. It's a breadboard ghost. Okay, so <laughs> did you like that? Uh, I have our breadboard. We need to have an LED for our projects that we're talking about today. And we also need to have a 330 um, uh, amp resistor thing. Thing. All right. So let's see. If the, there we go. That worked a little better. Oh, it's transparent if I do it that way. Interesting. It's like a magic trick. Ooh. Okay. Enough of that, right? So anyway, there's our uh, breadboard right there. And I'll switch the camera. Well, I'll finish this, then we'll do that. Um, so the basically, and then a male female jumper cables. Do, 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 do. So here's our pictures of our stuff we need now. How can you get some of this stuff? Well, there's lots of kits that basically you can buy. Hopefully this isn't transparent, yay. Basically you can buy, this is a $40 kit. Um, it has lots and lots of gizmos, lots and lots of fun stuff in here. And it actually has a breadboard that has all the stuff on it already. And it actually does have a website to do the projects. I'm actually currently walking through some of those projects. So hopefully we'll have those, sorry, hopefully we'll have those in a future class. But the good kit has a lot of the stuff in there that we need. Of course, this kit was, um, I think the previous class someone said, what, what's the name of that kit? This is actually uh, Freenovi, F-R-E-E-N-O-V-E, R-F-I-D starter kit. Starter kit right there. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I will put a link at the end, um, so if you want to check it out or whatever like that. Okay. has the FRID and I haven't even played with that yet and it also has a joystick okay so I will tell you in class this is one of those things where I actually tell them uh, how to order it where there's actually one on Amazon and I'll post the link later um, but on Amazon there's ones on there Amazon, eBay, there's lots of different kits out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start talking about getting ready with our Python. So uh, who has done Python coding before? Maybe, maybe not, but it's okay. It's text-based learning language. Uh, big thing about it is you can use it for other projects, okay? Um, you can use other languages with with some of this stuff but um, it's interesting because the 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 free Novi I guess it is the free Novi actually comes with the uh, projects that you can either do Python or you can do C um, well it's not C plus I think it's just C coding language uh, but of course we're going to deal with uh, Python today Python is a free language that you can download from the Python website and let me pull that up
uh, just python.org. So python.org, you just go to downloads and you pick out which version of uh, software operating system that you're using, like there's Windows and stuff, and it'll install itself, everything that you need to be included. Now, with our Raspberry Pi, our Raspbian software, or what they want to call it today, There you go. So they have actually imaging software, Raspberry Pi OS, that's what I thought. And it actually will include uh, Python installed on it. Let me see if we can get a, um, okay, I don't really see a description here. That's kind of what I was looking for. But anyway, basically you go to the raspberrypi.org website, you click downloads, and it'll actually has an imager that'll actually walk you through being able to um, put the uh, stuff on the um, stuff put the operating system <laughs> put the operating system on the the um, micro SD card and then it will uh, have Python already installed in it okay so let's talk about our Python code a little bit so I actually have it installed on Windows here so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll talk about this part and then I'll pull it up and then we can do it together okay so a big thing is is that we're going to first talk about using the shell okay the shell is the main area where it actually runs the program okay so if you are on the Raspberry Pi you look for the Raspberry Pi icon you click that that's kind of like the start button you go to programming and then go to Python 3 okay uh, this program is called an IDE interactive development environment this particular IDE is called IDLE the window that has opened is known as a shell in the shell you can type Python code and it will be executed straight away have to go at typing have a go at typing the following lines into the shell now the big thing is you'll see the three chevrons like this will be there all the time with the shell okay so if you ever do see code that does show the three uh, lines on there that are not, not expecting you to type that that's just showing that it's in the shell So let's go ahead and let's do that together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and open up Python And we are using Python version 3 And my latest version that I have on here it says is 3.8 <laughs> So here is our shell, okay in a minute we'll talk about a second window where we can actually save our code and I don't know if I can make that a little bit bigger because that may look very small in all this window hmm I have to think about that. Okay, so we have our shell, and what we want to type is our code that's right here. Okay, so you'll see the three chevrons just like that. So we're going to do something where we talk. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to do something that's going to get it to print on screen. So the word print means basically put something on the screen. Okay. When we do our Python, our Scratch to Python class, we'll cover this a lot, and it kind of goes a little bit more into that about some of the different uh, similarities between if you do do Scratch or you do do this or, you know, putting something on the screen. But let's go ahead and type this. So print. Oh, also if, uh, well, we don't, not, we don't do a ton of this, so I won't go into that too much. But there are some online um, versions of Python that you could follow along with me right here right now if you wanted to like Trinket um, but we'll just kind of follow along and do this for right now so I have print open parentheses and it will help us a little bit quote mark I am 
writing Python. Close quote and then close parentheses. We get a nice little green. And then if we hit enter, it's going to execute the program. And there it is. I am writing Python right on our screen. Okay. Now I'm a big believer in you just did something with code. So let's change it and do it again and get it to say something else. So I'm going to do print open parentheses quote hello class close parentheses close quote close parentheses excuse me hit enter hello class okay all right did you get it all right so let's talk about our next part here so you have just done your first set of Python coding. This is kind of the classic hello world, but it's saying hello class instead. We can get it to do a little bit of math. All we really need to do is do six plus six, hit enter, and it'll do our math for us, okay? So change it, do a different number, about 12 plus 156. And I do enter. Boom, there you go right there. So right in our shell, we understand a little bit more about how we can just do coding. Hit enter, it'll run the code and go down to the next line, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about our editor, okay? So the shell is great. If you just wanna run some small code, hit enter, let it run, but we don't always want to retype code over and over again now, do we? Or we want to be able to download uh, Python files and that already have the code on them and then run them. So let's learn a little bit more about that. So the big thing is that with this one, with the Python, now I will, I will hear people say, well, I use a different editor. That's fine. If you wanted to use a different one, that's fine. This is just the main one. This is the, the you know, completely free, of course, that we're talking about here from Python. <laughs> um, but there are other ways of doing this as well. So the big thing is this. We want to use the shell and we want to use the editor. So what does the editor allow us to do? Well, the editor will be like a sec separate window that pops up. And the best way I can describe it very quickly is think about this kind of being like Word. So we have something that the shell is kind of like where the program runs and the, the editor is basically where we type our code. It has no chevrons. When we hit enter, it goes down to the next line. It doesn't run the code. We have to, and this is where we can save our files as well. And we can hit run, and then when it runs the runs the code, where does it go? It sends it over to the shell to run the code. Okay, so this is kind of like our text editor. So how do we open that? Well, we go up here to File, and we hit New. Okay, and then boom, another window will open, and this is our editor. Okay, so do we deal a lot with having two windows open? Yes, we do, but that's okay because we kind of understand it now. This is our shell, okay, and this is our editor. So we can open up, we can type code, we can save code. Now it will need to be saved. So anytime you go up and try to click run on it, it will say, hey, you haven't saved this code. Um, you need to give it a name and then we'll actually run the code. There you go, okay? So let's go back. Uh, just a little side note, if you do see, if you're downloading anybody else's code or you're viewing code from a website, if you do see the hashtag on there, that means that that line is not to be run, ran, is not to run, or do not run this line because it has the hashtag. It's just for comments to be able to help you understand the code. So whoever creates a code or if you do, you throw in some hashtags there and it will not run that you'll just be able to um, read whatever the comments are. All right, now, let's go back then. You say, 
but I thought we were here to learn about our Raspberry Pi. That's right. So let's go back to our Raspberry Pi now. All right. So one of the features of our Raspberry Pi is our GPIO pins. Okay. One of the powerful features of the Raspberry Pi is the row of GPIO pins. So repeat after me. General purpose input output. General purpose input output. That's right. General purpose input output. So GPIO pins. So what does GPIO pins stand for? General purpose input output. Um, so these pins are physical interactive interface, excuse me, <laughs> between the Raspberry Pi and the outside world. At the simplest level, you can think of them as switches that you can turn on and off or that the Pi can turn on and off. Mm, hint, hint. Hint, hint. The GPIO pins allow the Raspberry Pi to control and monitor the outside world by being connected to electric circuits. The Pi is able to control LEDs, turn them on and off, run motors, and many other things. It's also able to detect whether a switch has been pressed, the temperature, and light. We refer to this as physical computing because it's changing something on the outside world. Okay. How many pins are there? There's actually 40 on our, um, yeah, 40 pins. Why does it say 26 there? Oh, 26 on an earlier model, <laughs> okay. It does help to read the whole paragraph. So, now I will tell you this, it does not have, it does not have a labeler, labeler on here. Um, with some of these kits, there can be basically strips that you can use like with the breadboard and then use an uh, IDE cable to plug into that and it'll be labeled here. Um, in class we have some great, um, what would you call that? Um, it's a labeler you put on top of it and it lists what the, the pins are. Okay, So the Raspberry Pi by itself we don't actually see what the pins are, it's not written on there. So we kind of have to have little labelers and stuff. A lot of times it's because it's just kind of small, small little area. All right. So if you have a pin labeler, it can help. Okay. If you don't have a pin labeler, then this guide can help you identify the pins. Now, uh, my handout here, I actually list what the pin is, but I also tell you where the pin location is. So can you technically... Uh, do this project without one of those. Yes, you can, or you could just use this as a reference. Okay. Are they in order? Now, I'll talk to some folks and they go, but the Arduino, that's fine. I've never actually done projects with the Arduino. This is what I'm familiar with, but my understanding the Arduino has it set up a little bit differently. A lot of people prefer that, um, but just realize that the numbers are not really in order. Okay and we'll talk about the different types um, right here. So the biggest thing with the different types of pins that we have, at least for this project, we'll say that, at least for this project is that there's a 3.3 volt pin, there's a 5 volt pin, there's a ground pins, and then there's general purpose input output, and if it says GP number, that means it's the general purpose a pin okay and what that means is when we write our Python code that's which one we want to turn off turn on um, control okay so that's really the main layout of the pins or at least the project we're doing today okay now for more projects and I'll actually show this mm -hmm. For more projects, and this is just kind of a listing of the one we're going to be doing today. This is their full lineup. Like I said, it's in the handout as well. Kind of written a little bit better so it can print out. Um, but it actually goes a little bit beyond some of the some of the ones that I have today, like using the buzzer. Uh, that we're, more than what we're going to be covering today, using the buzzer, setting up a traffic light, uh, ultrasonic, <laughs> ultrasonic and using motors and stuff 
and that's using the physical com uh, the physical computing with the Raspberry Pi okay now I'm hoping in the future maybe next month we'll actually have uh, Pi project time so if we do that it won't really be a formal class it'll be more like I have the instructions maybe it's a project I haven't even done before or it'd be a project we've done before and we'll just or I've done before just to kind of go over it and to teach it online too but kind of just project time uh, beyond just our introduction here okay so let's talk about our input and output now will disappear because I think my head is getting in the way my big heed is in the way let's talk about our input output and I can zoom in just a little bit more that's a little too far all right trying to keep it really big on the screen because I know some of you may actually be looking at this of course to like a cell phone or something all right so input and output just remember I'm covering our handout um, and I have it lit actually posted in the chat okay now after I think the next two pages I'll actually pull the Raspberry Pi out and we'll start doing some of our projects here I know it seems to be a kind of a lot to go over to begin with all right so using the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi uh, someone might say well you would get electrocuted with this uh, not really if you it's a good idea to not have it plugged in when you're plugging in the uh, the different components of it but if you're not using um, remember it is a very cheap little computer not that I'm saying that I don't care about it but just realize that if something does happen to it remember the most volts that you're basically getting for some of these projects is 5 volts okay yeah don't put your tongue on anything how about that okay using the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi it is easy to send a signal to an output component and to turn it on and off you can also detect whether an input component is on or off quite easily the components that operate in this way are called digital components the cell provides energy to the circuit to form electricity. A cell has a positive and negative side. Electric currents flow from the positive side of the cell to the negative side of the cell. Now I won't go into where there may be a new theory on this, but science is ever changing. And the good thing about science is it always challenges uh, previous notions and we've learned more. Okay. So anyway, I won't go into that. So uh, we're kind of focusing on the, our little project here. Uh, it's, uh, parts of the cell, negative side of the cell. So it goes from positive to ground or negative. Okay, An LED diode is a component that only lets current flow through it in one direction through, uh, through it. A little like a, a valve in a water pipe. Okay, So we have our circuit okay we have our long leg short leg with our LED okay this is a big one that um, in class if your project isn't working it may be because you have the uh, LED backwards okay so that's one to always check some of the LEDs the nicer ones are supposed to have a flat um, area to show you that's the negative but a lot of these cheap ones that we get um, only thing we can tell the the difference is because one leg is longer than the other okay short leg long leg so we have our battery coming out electricity is flowing that way with our arrow it also is being protected by our circuit or excuse me our uh, resistor here if you want to consider this a fuse that's fine and then it connects up and then when it closes now when it's closed this is kind of our button okay when it's closed that means electricity flows and just like turning on a wall switch on and off it actually will work okay now let's talk about our buttons okay the buttons basically close the circuit just like if you're putting the two wires together okay Buttons and switches are a class of input components. They allow a user to have some control over a circuit. 
to send signals to a, con a, con a computer. Now, on my project, we've actually got one where the button connects directly to the GPIO uh, pins on the Raspberry Pi. The one I'm about to show here is just to basically close our circuit so the LED light will come on. Okay. When the button is pressed, it sends a 1. When the button is released, it sends a 0. So on and off. Now, let's look at our breadboard a little bit, okay? Now, why use a breadboard? Well, so you don't have to solder anything together, okay? So breadboards are fantastically awesome for our projects, and it's great for our little, you know, GPIO pins and setting that kind of stuff up, too. So one of the things is I want you to take away from this is, and we're talking about more of our, our breadboard here. So... When we look at our breadboard, okay, we actually see several parts of it. We see what I call the middle. I call the middle the river. So the between the river, the left or the right side of the river, they don't actually um, send any electricity back and forth, okay? So just realize that when we put the LED in the middle here, there'd be no connection back and forth between the river, okay? The other thing we're not going to be using today, but some projects might in the future, is the rail. So along the side here, you'll see the red and the blue, the positive and the negative. So basically, I could put something here on the bottom, and it'll actually connect up with something here on the very, very top here. And I actually haven't done the project yet, but this new one actually has a power source, and it uses rails the rail system on the breadboard to actually uh, give power. But the main thing with our project is just realize that if we put something on this row and we plug in something on the other side of the row, okay, those will connect together, okay? But remember the river in the middle separates the two. So this is a little bit of a cutout here. So here's our rails going back and forth. We can plug something in here, plug something here, and they'll connect together. Don't put anything on the rail today and just realize that the, the river in the middle kind of separates the two, okay? And if that's confusing, don't worry. Uh, what I'm about to do will kind of demonstrate that a little bit better. All right, so let's talk about LEDs. LEDs are delicate little things. If you put too much current through, through them, they will pop, okay? Uh, has that happened? Oh, absolutely, it'll happen. Is it some spectacular no it's just it just doesn't really light up okay at least with these little LEDs with this amount of power to limit the current going through the LED you should always use a resistor someone might call it a fuse that's fine resistor um, in series with it let's talk about uh, connecting up so our first goal right now is this is actually the part two here this is our part one setting up our simple circuit so I'm going to walk us through it and then I'll actually be showing it okay I'll be doing our hands-on part how about that all right so connect the long leg LED to a 3 volts 3.3 uh, GPIO pin which is this one right here okay and then we're actually going to be connecting the LED uh, the short leg okay We'll have our long leg, excuse me, long leg, and then our short leg, and then we'll have our uh, fuse or resistor right here, okay, and then have that go back into the ground, okay. Now, does it matter which ground it goes to? No, it does not because it just needs to complete the circuit and then it, the LED will light up. Okay, so let me go ahead and we're going to switch on. Hey! Look, it's second camera mode, ooh. All right, so hopefully I have enough light going on over here. <laughs> now the funny thing about this is you'll actually see me and I'll be leaning over a little bit here because just kind of where I have the camera, uh, but it still should kind of work pretty well. So here's kind of our desk, here's our mouse sitting here, the mouse for scale. All right, so 
I mean, we're going to talk about some of our neat little projects we can do with our little Raspberry Pi, okay? Okay, so. So we have our breadboard. Let's go ahead and have that. Let's take our Raspberry Pi. Like I said, we're actually going to be dealing with the, um, the, the third one, and I'll open up the box for the other one later, okay? And I'm going to try not to move the table too much so it's a shake, not a shaky cam. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's our Raspberry Pi 3. I'm going to go ahead and take its little case off. I'll actually take it out of the case so you kind of see everything. Okay. All right, now I actually have uh, it already plugged into the wall, okay? So I do have my power coming out. So we have our Raspberry Pi right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Raspberry Pi and kind of get used to it, okay? How's that work? Does that work pretty good? All right, so you should still be able to hear me pretty well. Okay, so looking at our Raspberry Pi, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. And like I said, I have a Raspberry Pi 4, and I can open, show you that box in just a minute. So if I turn it this way, we have our standard HDMI out. The Raspberry Pi 4 actually has a two uh, mini uh, HDMI outs. Uh, we also have our power here. We have our headphone jack. And if we turn it this way, then we have our, our um, Ethernet plug. And we have our four USB plugs right there. Okay. Turn it this way. Here's our GPIO pins. And then this is where our micro SD card goes in right here. Okay. Now, when we actually look at, now all my instructions in the handout are geared towards having. Um, it this way so having your USB ports pointed down okay like I said you can get something that's like a ribbon that'll put on top of there that will get label but if you just kind of have the the handout that I have and kind of flip back and forth <laughs> Mac you like that huh this, we have our second camera going on today yes so we have our whoop da 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 let's just pretend that didn't happen so we have our CPU, we also have our GPU on there, and we have our pins right there. So let's talk about what we're gonna be doing, okay? So we've got our male to female. We've got our button, which we're gonna do just in a minute. We also have our LED, and we have our resistor, okay? Now, I've already got, and we've got our plug, uh, to plug our Raspberry Pi in. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. Now a big one is, is to make sure that we have our Raspberry, excuse me, our LED just like in our screen. And if we look at our LED, we should be able to see that there's a long leg and then there's a short leg on there, okay? So I wanna take the long leg and it doesn't matter what row I put it on, as long as it's the same row that I'm gonna be using um, plug in everything else. So I'm going to use that one there. Do I have to cram it on there? No, I don't. I just have to get it in there and I just need it to touch the bottom. Okay. So it really does not have to be um, really forced in there in any way. It just kind of has to just barely be touching the bottom. So it's kind of touching the, the system, the, um, the metal part. So remember, this is like the river. Okay. So nothing goes between the two. Now, let's get our resistor. Now I've actually had to take our resistor, it comes, it comes uh, uh, flat, so I actually had to bend it a little bit, okay? So we're bending it a little bit. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it on the same row. Remember, it doesn't have to be crammed in there. It just has to be kind of in there touching the bottom. And if I turn it a little bit, yeah, it'll be at 19. I could probably stretch it to 20, but it just has to be in there, okay? 
trying to give a full, you know, turning it so you can see it from a more than one angle. So you kind of get a little bit more of a feel about how that works. And my camera will stay focused, of course. Now, let's get our LEDs here. Excuse me, <laughs> let's get our cables here. First thing we want to do, and uh, believe it or not, in class I'll get asked, does the, 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 does the color of the cable actually matter? It actually does not, okay? This isn't a movie where someone says cut the red cord or something. <gasps> cut the red cord! That It doesn't matter, okay? You can make the color of the cord anything you want. So it's just your preference. And as you'll see... I've got it over there. You'll see that they come in a plethora of colors, okay? All right, so if I put it on the same row, I could put it here, 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 but as long as it's on the same row as our LED, okay? We have our male to female. Let's take that. Now, I can't put it here because remember the river part, it cut, just cuts it off, okay? I have to make sure it's on the same row. Does it really matter? Just so it makes that connection, okay? Hold it down there, it has a little bit more light on it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our GPIO pin. So I already know, excuse me, I already know that that's the one we want to plug into the top left. Okay. So we want this to go into our top left pin. And we want this one to go into the third on the right. Okay. So comes out, goes this way, long leg, short leg, goes to our resistor, goes to this, and it goes back to ground into our computer, okay? Maybe I should do it this way. Yeah, there we go. He flipped the script. That's right, I did. Yay, it's already working, isn't it? So once we get that going, it should light up our LED, okay? Did your LED light up? <laughs> it should light it up. That means we have a complete circuit, okay? Now, let's go ahead to our next part. Well, aha. Pinch that cord so it'll sit there. If I can do it. There we go. I think I got it. Okay. All right, so we got our LED on, and our next part, like I said, there are some really nice um, LEDs that actually have this going on where there's a cutout on it, and it'll show you which is the negative and which is positive. I don't have any like that, but there you go right there. Hmm, okay. So the next thing we're wanting to do so that we can actually start our project is we'd actually unplug the three versus three power and plug it into GPIO 17, okay? Like I said, some of this I'm not gonna be able to actually demonstrate, but we're just gonna kinda of talk about it. So you'll be ready, and then I'm actually gonna plug our button in to turn our light on and off that way, okay? All right, so basically we moved the wire down there GPI 017, and when we actually do our code here, the light should turn off, by the way. So basically, then we start our project. 
we start our Python, our Python shell. And with this Python shell, we basically are going to program it so it'll just turn the LED light on and then turn the LED light off. Okay. So let me get all this to disappear for a minute. We can actually read what's on the screen. How about that? That's a good idea. All right. So GPIO0. All right, so one of the things is Python actually has some built-in libraries, so we don't have to do a lot of coding. Uh, we just have to reference the coding library, okay? So it may look like we're doing some kind of simplistic um, codes, and you're like, well, it's doing a lot. it is doing a lot in the background, okay? We open up our shell again. You can switch an LED light on and off by typing commands directly into the Python shell. Let's do this by first importing the GPIO0 library. You can also need to tell the Pi which GPIO pin you are using. In this case, pin 17. Capitalization does matter. Big hint, hint. So in the shell, not, we're not, we're just doing the shell right now. So in the shell, we would type, and I'll show that. Of course, we'll have to pretend. So in the shell, we need to type from, and I'll probably get it. I'll get an error message when I hit enter. I believe on one of these. G P I O zero import capital letters L E D. Okay, and I hit enter. Yeah, I get an error message because it, it's not connected up right now. And then, it, oh, excuse me, it knows it's not on, um, on a Raspberry Pi, it's in Windows. So if I do LED, well, I don't want to be distracting, so I, I'll just, I won't do that because I don't want to see error message every time. So we type in this, it says from the GPIO0 library, import LED. Now, this isn't a... Um, Anyway, we have to give the association here, the connection with the LED with the, the capital letter. So basically, we have to tell it we want to call it LED lowercase and have to call it LED lowercase and capital LED, which references what the code is in the library. Okay. Variable, thank you. We have to tell what the variable is. I just remembered what that was. <laughs> so the variable, we're going to make it connected up to LED, and we're going to make it 17, so it knows that that's connected that way on GPIO 17. Okay. First thing we're going to type in after these two lines is we type in LED lowercase on. It'll actually turn our LED on. Okay, and then. The next line, type in LED um, dot off, open parentheses, close parentheses, hit enter, and it'll turn the LED light off. Okay, so here's on, here's off. Now let's talk about making the LED flash. Now we're going to use. We're going to use the editor. Okay. So we're not going to be typing it into the shell anymore. We're actually going to be typing into the editor. Okay. So you can do new. New. We're going to be talking about the sleep. We'll also be talking about a loop. We want to save our file as gpioled.py. So here's our code right here. Now. Let's talk about our code because this is our first Python code. From GPIO0 import LED, make sure that's capital there. And this time we're also going to import something called time. From the time library, we're going to import something called sleep. Okay. And we're going to tell it the um,
uh, the variable of LED is what we're going to do. Okay. Now, while true, uh, and I do this in class because usually what happens is it only blinks once. Students are like, well, how do I make it do it again? It's like, okay, well, you got to run it again. But let's go ahead and let's do the code to get it to loop. So if you did not type the while true, it would only turn the LED light on once and then turn off. Okay. But if you do while true, now the big thing is the T has to be capitalized. Once you start typing in while true, it'll automatically indent or give some spaces here. Okay. That means you're doing it right. Type in LED, sleep off, sleep one. Now what does the one mean in sleep? It means one second. Okay. So it means it'll turn it on, the computer will go to sleep for a second, turn the light off, and then the computer will go to sleep for one second, and then turn the light on, around and around and around, until we actually hit something on the keyboard. Now, how do we get it to stop? We actually hold down Control C on the keyboard, which will get it to exit the program, okay? Once we type that, I'm sorry, I skipped a part. Once we, no, actually I didn't. Once we type that in, that's where our code's gonna work. Once we type that in, we actually go, we hit run, and then we hit run module, or you can hit F5 on the keyboard, uh, the function key F5. It'll have to be saved as give it a name, and then it will actually run it. Now, uh, I give the challenge to students. I say, well, how can you make the light blink faster? Do control C, stop your code. And believe it or not, one means one second. So what, if you want to make it longer, you can add more seconds. Or you can change it to half a second or a quarter of a second. So half a second is 0.5. What do you think a quarter of the second would be? It'd be 0.2, wouldn't it? OK, so and you get it to blink. And some of them will actually get it to blink really, really fast, blah, 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 which is kind of fun. Now the other part about it is, or the challenge is, you could actually add more lines. You could actually make it do like a Morse code, da 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 If you wanted to, you can add another LED on, do the sleep, tell it a certain seconds, and then actually get it to like do a a drum beat blinking or something like that. Okay, so. Just be aware of that there's a lot of going on in this code. It's very simplistic right now, but you can make it a lot more advanced uh, than it is. And like I said, make sure you the while true is indented. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do my button here. So how do we just kind of connect a certain um, normal button? We'll do our button, and then we'll talk about some of our other projects we can do too. Okay. And also talk about the the piano one that you can do if you have a bunch of buttons. All right, so if we actually connect it up, now this project is connecting up the the button separately. And in a second, I'm going to um, plug in the excuse me, mess with the button directly is what I'm going to do. Okay. So here we are right here. We've got it the 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 button here. We plug the button in. One thing that's interesting about the buttons are it's on the same side, okay? These don't connect in between. It's the buttons that has to be the cords on the same side, okay? Now, it actually doesn't matter which button side that you use or which one that you use. There's not an input or a, a way the electricity has to flow. It just has to close the circuit, okay? So this is where you test your button. Make it say on screen, wait for button press, press the button, it'll say you pressed me. Okay. And again, always recommend change your code, play around with the code, and then you'll better understand your code immediately. Okay. Basically setting it up the same way as before, but this time we're doing LED, bring in the button, and also we're setting it that way too. The very these are the two variables here and we've given it the title LED and button. You can call these whatever you want. You just have to make sure to reference them down here. And uh, if anything's capitalized, you have to use the same thing there too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and we are actually going to, hey, look. Okay, so 
We're going to generally plug in a button right now. And I'm actually going to use box got all my goody goody stuff in here I got buttons I got motors I got keypads and this kit actually has a great project here's the RFID uh, reader scanners on there I haven't done that project yet this is a newer kit that I opened up earlier this month a little LCD screen going on so I need a mail to mail wire So I got my button. Let's go ahead. Let's break the circuit. Now I could put it here, but I actually want to make it so that you can see I'm going to extend it over a little bit here. So if I put my button down here, I could put the button on the same line there. But I'm going to show that. I'm going to do the button on one side here. And then I'm going to put my button. Now, let me show this a little more here. So basically what I'm doing is I've taken my button. A big thing about the button is they they have like a little hat. Okay. See if you can hear that noise. Clicking the button there. So usually the, they have a, a whole bunch of different colors that you can get. And if we put that on there, it will snap on there. Now the button's teeth are kind of it'll 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 um, get bent very easily, so just be be careful with that. But they are actually designed to fit right into the breadboard pretty easily. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to I could put it on the same row and then put the wire here, but I want to extend it out so it's over here on the left side. So I've got a mail to mail. I want to put it plug it into right there and remember we have to do the same row now over our volts make sure that's the same row yep and then make sure that's the same row as our teeth you see the teeth now when I press the button yay all right, there you go right there. Okay, so let's talk about some of our rest of our handout and then we'll jump to um, do you realize our handout is basically an all day <laughs> morning and afternoon class that we do or we'll break it up into two separate classes as well. So that's kind of turning it on, uh, waiting for me to the, press the button, press the button, the LED comes on for three seconds and then turns off, okay? Using our code. This is the code to create a reflex game, okay? And then here's the final code for doing the reflex game. We actually import random from randent. Excuse me, that was backwards. Now this is about making our whippy cushion. Okay. Whippy cushion is basically just a paper plate, uh, some tin foil, a glue stick, and some alligator clips. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've had all ages have a good time with this. Uh, the neat part about it is you can get it to make noises when people sit on it. Or, uh, remember our Raspberry Pi does not come with um, the actual speakers built in, which I'm very excited to say 
that we actually have some speakers now for all our Raspberry Pi. So when we do our future classes, yay! <laughs> Before we went, we, we went home and we're staying safe. We actually had a bunch of speakers that came into the library. So all our Raspberry Pis now will have speakers for our projects. Yay! Yes, it's very exciting for me and everybody else. So basically, uh, one of the things that comes in, and this is their main project here that kind of talks about it, how it works, need a speaker. So because we didn't have that in class, and talks about making the whoopee cushion, I actually have uh, done a code on here that we're importing, it's waiting for the button press, that instead it actually does a variable, uh, a random variable, and it actually says different words on the screen. So I actually coded a different thing that happens because we didn't have sound. So this is a little bit of a more of an extra. If you are trying to do this with somebody that doesn't have a, a, a you know, plug-in sound, this is what you may want to actually do with it, okay? And it's very silly, I know. Okay, so there's your final code for that. And you have your digital whoopee cushion already. All right, now let's talk about some of our projects, okay? So this one is about our reaction game. <laughs> and I believe it's this website. It'll actually show you how you can do it, uh, make it into a two player um, react, um, reaction game. Let me disappear here. Okay. So it talks about what you'll need. Need your buttons. Basically everything I talked about today just doubled. Talks about connecting the circuit. So this is the two player. Okay, good. This is the two player reaction game. Now my handout is just a one person reaction game, but that actually has a two player reaction game on it. Okay, so the circuits on that, and then it actually has the controlling. Yeah, it talks about everything on there. LED, it'll actually even going into doing the players' names as well. Okay, so I've actually thought about this being a, a project for future class because it actually included a lot of more coding and going into uh, doing more variables too. Okay, so that's kind of going beyond our class here. So let's start talking about some of the other projects we can do and things that we can build, okay? All right, so one of the big things that we actually have going. I'll, I'll do the media player first. So have lots of DVDs and maybe you're thinking they're not the easiest things to access anymore. <laughs> well, you can actually rip those DVDs and put them on a device as well, okay? So one of the things you can do is you can install Kodi on your Raspberry Pi, okay? Kodi works for all the different uh, systems even Windows as well. So basically you go to the main Kodi uh, TV website You do Raspberry Pi uh, This is great. This will do music like you could rip um, MP3 you could rip your CDs into MP3s or anything like that or if you have like a big collection of MP3s at this point um, you know Talk about all the legal methods and stuff. So yeah, so you're doing that you have that already going on. You can put your home movies on here as well. So someone could watch, walk up, choose the, the home video section, and then be able to watch home movies and stuff. So click there, do Raspberry Pi, and it will actually have a whole guide for it. Okay. I've been using the uh, L-I-B-R-E-E-L-E-C okay, version. Click there. And it'll actually, well, that's not what I want. I'll go to download. Take me here. It has a full 
walkthrough. It even has an app that'll install it onto the um, micro SD card for your project. So one of the cool things about having this as a project is you can actually set it up so that you could exchange or change out. If you just had one Raspberry Pi, you could exchange or change out your projects just by switching out the micro SD cards. And there you go right there if you wanted to. So this is great. Let's you it uses a whole bunch of the different ones. And of course it uses version four. Um, you just basically tell it which Raspberry Pi you're, you're working with, okay? And that is Cody. And they should have, where is, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So here, right here, and you can set up your movies. There's even apps like Tiny, um, what is it called? The Tiny uh, Movie Manager that you can actually uh, create, download um, the, the, the posters for your movies. It'll give them titles and everything and have them in there. Um, also, it does TV shows if you want to rip all those. And also, like I said, you can pre-rip your uh, mu music, have it on there. And it also does um, the also does like home movies and stuff. So if you're looking for something that's an easy photo home movie viewer, this is a great device. And remember, we're talking about a small little thing. And you can, of course, plug in because it has USB. You can plug in an external hard drive. You don't have to save all your movies and music and stuff to the um, the micro SD card that's connected to it. So that's a great project, a fun thing to do. And it makes it very easy. Something you can plug into a TV, and a lot of our TVs will use CEC, which will allow you to control it with the actual TV remote, okay? But if that doesn't work with your TV, you can get a very cheap and easy USB um, type of device remote to plug in there, and they sell a lot of those on Amazon and eBay and places like that, okay? I know another remote, but you don't always have to do it that way. Now, since we talked about that, Okay, so there are many ways that you can do like old school gaming, and one of those is using the re uh, RetroPie. Okay, so the deal with this is you're only supposed to do the games that you already own. Of course, you probably have a closet full of a bunch of those games, <laughs> so you can use those. So the big thing about this is. It uses a whole bunch of different uh, classic systems. It'll even do like a PlayStation 1 games with the Raspberry Pi 3. And they're work, even working on some of the Dreamcast games to even work that way with the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. So it's pretty cool to have everything on there. I won't go into how you get the, the ROMs and stuff, um, but that's a very easy search. You're just supposed to have the ones that use the games that you already previously own. So here's kind of a list of all the game systems that it can use. It talks about Raspberry Pi 4 uh, support, which was a big breakthrough because when it came out, it took over a year of them to actually get that to work on there. So there you go right there. Not sure what that is. I'll have to look into what that is. Let's see. Anyway, so if there's some pictures on here, I believe it talks about building your own Raspberry Pi machine. Here's kind of a walkthrough about how to do it, and it'll go into if you did want to do something more of a, a project similar to this, which I have done. 
It's a lot of fun. It's a great project to do. And you can first start out by building it basically in cardboard, kind of like a mock-up. Let's see if I can find one that I had the instructions for. So basically you have the Raspberry Pi, you have the guts to do it um, together, hold oh, the guts to do it, but you have the guts, the, I mean the inside parts, Raspberry Pi, and I, I don't know what the deal is, I usually can pull it right, right up and it's just right there. Hmm. Okay, I don't see the exact one that I've basically been talking about, but this is one of those that's on Instructables. And uh, it's a little bit more of a uh, not as pretty. <laughs> I will say that. Not as pretty as the one that the instructions that I used, but it does have a lot of instructions here about building it. And it is out of cardboard. Now, I actually officially made mine 100% out of cardboard. That one's using another board. And it kind of goes through the uh, lineup of showing you how to put it together and everything. Why, why, maybe, maybe that project's not available anymore. Anyway. The, the one I made is, let's see. <laughs> a little bit more similar to, to these up here, which come up. And like I said, you can find those pretty easily. I the specific one that I used, I don't see that anymore. But just you first make it with cardboard, which is a really neat project idea. You basically get the guts for the the joysticks and everything and you kind of lay it out it's a great project to work on this might be yeah, that seems a little bit more like let's see yeah this is a little bit more like the one that I made but he's full-fledged made it in wood but it's a neat project it's a fun thing to do, and all you need is a Raspberry Pi and maybe like an old monitor, okay? <laughs> okay, now, since we kind of talked about that, and we're kind of getting close on our time here, I want to make sure that we do talk about some of our other projects that we can do. So the music one, and I have a little video for that. If we actually go to projects.raspberrypi.org, they actually have lots of different projects to work on with our Raspberry Pi. Now they kind of jump into a little bit of everything. So they'll do Python. It'll talk about, um, you know, Unity's on here, Blender is on here as well, Scratch and everything. Now, let me go ahead and do Raspberry Pi on here. And I'll show you the one I want to talk about. Here it is. They call it a music box, but I you could actually, and this is kind of our plan for our cl class in the future uh, at the library, and basically making it into um, a, um, they call it a music box, but what I would probably want to do is basically turn it into a musical instrument. So if I take the buttons and I can choose whatever I want them to play, I could actually get some sound clips of let's say piano, or you could do just silly sounds or something, and then turn it into like a piano player. So let's look at that. Today, you're going to wire buttons to your Raspberry Pi and use Python to make a sound machine. <laughs> Project, you will need a Raspberry Pi, 
a breadboard, some buttons, and some male-to-male -male and male-to-female jumper cables. A Raspberry Pi has 26 GPIO pins. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. These pins allow you to send and receive on-off signals to and from electronic components like LEDs, motors and buttons. Each pin has a number and there are additional pins that provide 3.3 volts, 5 volts and ground connections. A pin diagram or labeler like this one helps you to know which pin is which. Buttons give you control over a circuit and let you send signals to a computer, like the keys on your keyboard. Before wiring your circuit, switch off your Raspberry Pi. Place one of your buttons onto your breadboard like this. Make sure you push the legs as far down into the holes as you can. Next, connect a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi to the negative rail on the breadboard using a male to female jumper wire. Then, connect the negative rail to the button with a male to male jumper wire. Now, connect the other leg of your button to GPIO pin 17 using another male to female jumper wire. You've now created an electrical circuit. It has power and a pathway to conduct the electric current. In your circuit, the current flows from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pin through the circuit to the ground pin. Your button acts as a switch that can break the circuit. When the switch is open, no current can flow. When the switch is closed, the current flows from negative to positive through the completed circuit. Which way does the current flow in your circuit? Early scientists believed that current flowed from positive to negative. They called this conventional current. We now know that current actually flows in the opposite direction, from negative to positive. But we still use the term conventional current, which can be confusing when you're new to electronics. What we can agree on is that electronics is all about controlling electric current to make it do something useful. That's the hardware complete. Now for the software. We're going to use a Python programming environment, or IDE. Create a new project by clicking New. Set up your button by typing from GPIO0 import button. Then create a variable. BTN equals I'm gonna skip ahead a little button, bit. open parentheses, 17, close parentheses. Next, music box in your home directory nit one rav play the sound you might like to change the text in your print statements to some deaf please con ideas in the comments below <laughs> i didn't realize until like last year that when people were talking about anchorman Right. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty great, isn't it? Okay. So we're getting close to the end of class here. I know. I know. I know. But I did want to make sure to show you. So this is a recent Kana kit that I got. Which project I was working on, I needed a Raspberry Pi 4. So I actually had to get a different one. So, and I'll, I'll post both of these um, links just if anybody's interested in them at all. So, except for opening it for one of our previous classes here, I actually haven't done um, in, taken anything out of it to just kind of show what's in here. So this is the one I actually have. Like I said, two Razer Pi fours. Um, I got the uh, the the case that had more wires with it, and that actually has a white uh, case. This one has the black case on it. And the big change, the two big changes that we have going on here from our three, wherever I set that down to, there it is. So our big, some of our big changes here from our three to our four is basically it having the, the mini HDMI plugs. 
So we have our, this kit, we actually have, I'll go through what's in the kit first and then we'll talk about that. So we have our micro, excuse me, mini HDMI to HDMI plug. We actually have our Raspberry Pi 4. We have a micro SD to USB. And the Raspberry Pi 4 can get very hot. So they are really big on recommending to make sure that you do have a fan, okay? So for the other projects, may or may not, but this really is, if you're gonna be doing like media or the game thing that we talked about or anything like that, you really should have a fan. That was the big one about getting the Kana kit is because it already had a fan with it. And I've been buying things from them from a long time. Now, one of the things that it doesn't have, um, a, a Razer Pies don't have an on and off switch, okay? This actually is an on and off switch now for the USB-C, which is different than the SD uh, plug that we have in there now for the Razer Pi 3. I think I'm saying the name of that wrong, but anyway. And then here is our power supply. Power supply is a little bit bigger than our Raspberry Pi 3, okay? It's kind of a little bit more of a square. And we also have our heat sinks on there, little stickers to stick on there. And we have our case that's there. So now that we've kind of looked inside the box, see what's on the box, let's look at, and we also have a really nice chart here talking about what the GPIO pins are. Okay. So do I think you have to have one of the labelers? No, I don't because most of the projects, at least I do, I can actually have an external thing to look at. So there's the four and then there's the three. Okay. About the same size, can you use the same cases? No, because the HDMI. So here's the standard HDMI out. Here's the double um, mini HDMI. Yeah, it's mini or is it? Yeah, mini. Mini HDMI outs plugged there. Here's our USB-C, and it does require more power. You always make sure that with your Raspberry Pi that you have a good power source with it. The good thing we do have two is we have two USB three plugs here so that that'll go faster transferring data. But as you see, our, our GPIO pins are the same, so we can still use this to do any kind of projects that we have done in the past, okay? Faster, does need a fan, GPIO, um, the same, so we can do the same projects. And the biggest thing about this versus other little computers is the community is so large. And of course the company, it really is focused on education for its programming, um, getting new you know, programmers out there uh, and all that kind of positive stuff, I guess you'd say. All right, so I'm gonna show you a quick video talking about the new Razer Pi 4. And I'll disappear. So the standard is 35. They have different sets of RAM they have. And they're trying to push it more of a desktop computer.
little side note too um, you use the plug on the left as the main one if you're doing any projects that actually don't have the um, you know just one output instead of having to use both of them but yeah and again remember that operating system comes free but there's different different choices of RAM now now they have a choice of eight eight gigs of RAM if you wanted to this is only a four and like I said I'll actually post uh, the the, uh, the links into the description after the video is finished okay So yeah, I didn't buy now. What does it show? Oh, it just shows. So if I do, where is? Oh, it's gonna send me places to buy, like all fruit or something like that. There's our candy kit. There you go. The board only. Of course, you can't just do the board. You need the basic kit, at least with the power supply and everything. And I believe this is the one. It's not really the one, but it's similar. That one has a keyboard in it. Okay. But the good part is it comes with this power supply. And you know it's a good standard power supply for it, so it can get lots of good power. Oh, I know what it is because I told it uh, two instead of four. All right, so there's your basic kit right there, and you can buy the things extra. So $35 if you wanted the more of the RAM one, <laughs> it does cost more, which is recommended. Uh, maybe not the eight gigs, you may not really need that, depending on if you're gonna actually use it as a desktop device, then that would probably be recommended, but there you go right there. Okay, so let's talk about everything we've kind of covered today. Have we covered a lot? Yes, we have. So, we talked about physical computing. We talked about the introduction to the Raspberry Pi computer. <laughs> uh, we talked about input, output, GPIO pins that are on there. We also talked about our breadboards with the different projects. We also talked about getting started with Python, writing our first Python program, kind of our hello world, switching our LEDs um, on, plugging it in, plugging in our buttons, connecting, setting up a reflex game. We talked about our whoopee cushion and we also talked about a whole bunch of other projects that you can do. Lots of fun stuff. I didn't even show you. Here's my little Nintendo. So I have a, ra a Raspberry Pi 3 in here. And if we open it up, boom! There's our USB. So I have it doing emulation and everything with our little USB plugs. On there, there's our standard HDMI out on the back. And there's our power supply. And it has something really neat, kind of like the original one had. This little box. And look, I can use it to hold other memory cards in there, can't I? But it's just a really neat case. And the neat part about the case is the power button actually does work just like the old NES. And I actually do have <laughs> and I actually will get them confused sometimes because the one on the left is the the one on the left is the NES Classic that Nintendo came out with and here's my Raspberry Pi with its little uh, Nintendo case on it okay <laughs> and this doesn't flip open at all but of course you know it has all the games built into it because it's that NES Classic and I have to put the little games in there but it's still pretty neat. The little Nest Classic one. 
All right, so covered a lot. So any final questions? So I recommend you keep an eye out for some of our other classes that we have on here. We'll do our, our scratch class, um, animation, if you're into that or interested, or have family members that are interested in that. And they'll also do our scratch gaming class as well. And then we'll do our scratch to Python class where we use coding blocks with Python um, to be able to do some coding with that as well. So let's go ahead and Let's talk about what class we have this afternoon. And I will disappear. So bye bye. Bye bye, second uh, camera. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, so Google search and internet safety basics we're doing this afternoon. We'll talk about using Google search engine, uh, keywords, internet scams, spotting fake news, and also keeping yourself safe on, online as well. Uh, this is our schedule of classes for the rest of the month. So keep an eye out for that. A little side note too, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for more information about that. Does the library have um, books on coding. Does the library have books on Raspberry Pi stuff and Scratch? Yes, they do. Um, thank the librarians for being able to do the curbside holds pickup. That's a wonderful service and they're working very hard to get that out and everything like that. Uh, you can call into the, the, the library for questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and don't forget to like us on Facebook to keep up to date like our videos here on YouTube and also uh, share them with friends or family members and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel here so anytime I go live or any of the other librarians go live with videos you'll be alerted and updated okay also to be able to find our YouTube channel this is you're on it right now but deal to find it in the future hit subscribe or go to GCH search for GCHRL uh, videos and it'll pull right up all right did you learn something new did you have fun I hope so did you get excited about all kinds of neat little projects I hope so too I'll see you next time okay everybody y'all have a great day I'll see you this afternoon happy Thursday See you next time. Have a great afternoon. Hope to see you this afternoon, okay, or in a future class. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. Stay safe, and don't forget to go outside and exercise. <laughs> Bye.